Hi guys, Pastor Todd here. Uh, thank you for joining me again. This is installment number four on Psalm 1. If you didn't get a chance to see any of the other videos and, and to have that devotion time with us, I encourage you to do so. Wherever you found this, you can find that as well. Uh, but we're going to get into the last little chunk of Psalm chapter 1. So far, we've seen what the blessed life looks like, right? What the good and happy life looks like. And that is one that enjoys God, that enjoys uh, being in his word and enjoy spending time with him in prayer and praise with his church and, and all the many beautiful gifts that he gives us. But it's not like, remember the other side of the coin is, is it's not living a life of sin. It's not embracing a worldview of the scoffers, the wicked, uh, or anything like that. And, and having that shape who we are. And so we talked about how important it is to, uh, observe and to be cautious in, in who and what is shaping who we are. Let Jesus shape who you are. Because that means that you are a redeemed child of God. And that's the, that's the best identity that we can have. And it is a true identity because that is a, the free gift we are given at the cross. All right. So we are going to wrap up this psalm, which I've always thought this psalm kind of ends in a funny way. Uh, it, it ends kind of on a peculiar note, but there's actually a lot here that I think is worth noting. Remember, we've gotten both sides of the coin, but we're actually going to return back to the wicked. All right. This is important to know. And we'll see in later Psalms that this is important that the psalmist notes it here. Let's take a look. We're going to start at verse four. If you have your Bible out, go ahead and grab it. I got mine. Let's get into Psalm chapter one, starting at verse four. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You know, this image of chaff, it, it, it's one that if you grew up on a farm, you're very familiar with. If you didn't like me, then it, it's one that you got to Google. Uh, but if you go ahead and Google it, pause this and Google that right now. Just don't get stuck in a wormhole, I guess. But uh, what we can see is that it's like the little hairs uh, that you don't need when you're making flour or when you're using the grain for what it's meant for. Uh, so what we can see is like like when you when you have corn, right, and and all those little hairs kind of fall off of it. This is similar to chaff, and and what happens to it is after. The grains are extracted. The chaff is just blown away by the wind, right? That that's all that it's kind of good for. These are symbols of judgment, right? That's a that's a tough word, isn't it? Judgment. It's a word that we don't want to hear. It's a word that that sticks with us. It's a word that maybe even triggers us in some ways. We we felt judged before, and so whenever we see it, we're like, oh, who's judging who? Who's what's going on here? But in scripture, when we see judgment, I think it's important for us to note it, Note that when it's talking about the judgment of God, it's talking about identifying things for what they truly are. When you go into a, a courthouse and you sit in a courtroom, what you, what you see is a judge saying, what really happened? That person is guilty or not guilty. They're just simply saying what is there. That's the judgment. And, and for here, what we can get to see is, is, of course, God knows the difference between dark and light. Of course, he knows the difference between good and evil. Of course, he knows the difference between a, a sinner and a righteous person. He, he understands these things. He's God, after all, right? And as we look at this, we see that, that the judgment that is involved is one that is blown away, one that is cast away, one that is actually rejected by God. Now, some people will say that, that this is actually uh, referring to the last day when, when Jesus will come and judge. And, and you could look at that in a small way. But what this is really talking about is ongoing judgment. And this is a hard one to hear. In, in like Obadiah verse 2, it talks about how God has made the unrighteous small, right? He's made, he's made us like dust. When we begin Lent every single year, right, we talk like on Ash Wednesday, we we talk about how we are dust and to dust we shall return. Whenever we sin, we become chaff. We become dust. We become quite opposite to that tree that we just had that picture of last time, right? I mean, that tree was firmly rooted. It was nourished. It was cared for. But here we see chaff or dust has no roots. It's just blowing all over the place. And if you live out here in the Antelope Valley, where I do, sandstorms are terrible, especially kind of this time of year. 
uh, in the spring and even in the fall. But you drive through some pockets of the desert and you can barely see because the sand and the dust is just so fierce and so strong. And that's because there's no connection that dust really has to one another. And there is no uh, rootedness in the ground. So this is an opposite picture of the rooted tree that we are getting here. It's the opposite picture. One of the verses that we can also think about, and I'll let you look up on your own, is in Matthew 25. This is a, this is a picture of judgment from Jesus. This is really towards the end of his earthly life, and he's speaking about judgment. He's actually talks about the last day. He's like, either I'm going to know you or I'm not going to know you. So either you know me or you don't know me. And what God is saying is that a life without knowing him is one where we are just destined for dust. We are just heading straight for the grave and that's all we got. But a life that knows him is one that is like that tree that is firmly rooted, that's flourishing, that's prospering in life, that's happy, that's blessed. But this means living a life of faith. It means living a life of trust. It means confessing our sins. It means even bringing that judgment upon ourselves. That word judgment, I mean, it, it, it's something that we do to ourselves. That th Those times when we feel ashamed for what we've done, or we feel guilt or regret over the things that, that we have done, or the thoughts we've had, or the words that we've said, or the things that we've typed, or, or whatever we have done, we judge ourselves. And rightly so, and we should. And whenever we feel the guilt over our sin, what I want you to know is that's actually God at work in you. That's what, He is coming into you and he is letting you know what is really up with you in your life. That you are living a life of sin. And so we are called not to stand with the wicked. But in those times that we do, we have one who stands with us. We have one who comes to us in our dust, in our wickedness, right? It says the wicked will not stand in judgment. Of course not. None of us will. You won't and I won't. And sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So for the Lord knows the righteous and the way the wicked will perish. From dust we've come and dust we shall return. But here's this beautiful hope that we can have, is that we have a God of mercy. We have a God who knows the difference between right and wrong and has sent his son. When we put all of this in light of Jesus, what we get to see is that he comes to us in the midst of our not being able to stand and he lays down his perfect and righteous life for the sake of the wicked and the sinner, for the sake of us. So this isn't, this Psalm isn't putting out before us like some sort of holy life to achieve. What, what the psalm is really showing us is saying, enjoy the God of mercy because he's raised you up. And his judgment now, because of the cross, he looks upon you and he says, good. They're my child. He says, I know you. And you know me. We have a relationship. I've rescued you. So putting all of this in light of the cross, as we should any little chunk of scripture, brings us so much hope. And I hope it does for you today as well. Before we wrap up, what I want you guys to do for tomorrow, for Friday, is do, you know what, a couple of read-throughs through Psalm chapter 1. And this is going to be the rhythm for our Fridays, is do one quick read-through out loud. And then one that's a little bit slower and just take your time with it. I want you to note what sticks out to you. What, what is God speaking to your heart? And then I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, as you read that, I want you to ask, am I happy? Am I a blessed one? And then I also ask, what in my life is keeping me from being happy? What is keeping me from being happy? And how is Jesus helping me with this today? All right, so am I happy? What's keeping me from being happy? And how is Jesus going to help me out with that? So I want you guys to think about those things, reflect upon those things tomorrow. So we'll have a non-video devotion and just rest and enjoy God tomorrow. All right, let's have a word of prayer, guys. Grace, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for 
uh, time in your word. We see that we are dust, but you raise us up out of the dust. You take our dry bones and breathe into us new life. So God, breathe into us new life this day. Forgive us all of our sins. Raise us up out of our, our guilt and our shame and bring to us the power of the resurrection, newness, renewal, redemption. God, we praise you. We enjoy you and we thank you for this time. Bless us as we depart and we look forward to gathering together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all. Uh, if you wanna worship, uh, with with uh, my the two congregations that I lead, Grace Lutheran Church and uh, the Well, I encourage you to do so. We worship. Uh, uh, you can find it on this this location at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. So thank you all for joining me, and God's peace, blessings on your day. Enjoy it. Beautiful weather outside, everyone. Take care.